Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Savannah J. Goins, author of Young Adult Fantasy, and today I'm going to give you my five tips for how to outline your novel. So first of all, why should you write an outline? Well, there's two reasons that writing an outline is really helpful to writing a novel, and the first one is that it can help you when you come into writer's block when you're trying to get out that first draft. So if you're if you're stuck at some point but you have an outline to refer to, you can look at that and it either it will tell you where you originally wanted to go with this scene um, to let you know, you know, how to get unstuck from where you're at or it'll at least have the next scene planned out a little bit and even if you need to take a break from that scene you're stuck in you could move on to another scene and know that your scenes are all going to still end up matching and going together because you outlined them to do that the other reason is that it can help you prevent plot holes and it can help you identify them early and prevent them from ending up in your rough draft and causing you giant problems because if you have written out an outline and as you're looking over that you realize oh you know these two things actually aren't compatible this is not gonna work if this is supposed to happen then you can go ahead and fix it in the outline phase and it's so much easier than trying to fix it in a 80,000 word document where there's already a whole bunch of things depending on it and it's already you know mentioned in other places and then you have to go through the entire thing with a fine tooth comb and find all of the problems this plot hole has caused. I've definitely never done that before. <laughs> So it can help you fight writer's block, and it can help you prevent having plot holes in your rough draft. So point number one is to identify your story spark. And this does not necessarily mean the uh, heart of your story or the message of your story. This is the original idea that made you think, oh my goodness, I should write a book about that. So it could be about a certain kind of character or a certain situation or a certain magic system. Whatever it is that you just thought of it and it just sparked your imagination and you just got real excited and thought, man, there needs to be a book about this and I am going to write it. So whatever that is, Think about that, keep that in mind. So point number two is to write that down. And when I say write it down, I really mean type it out because you're gonna need to have some flexibility for this exercise. So you need to go ahead and type it in um, some kind of a document instead of writing it down. That's what I recommend doing for this exercise. Okay, so point number three is to add two things to that, usually something on either side of it. So if say it's a situation where two characters are gonna fall in love, so that, that's very a very generic example, but say that's your idea spark. These two certain characters are going to fall in love. So something's got to happen before that and after that. So um, put something in before that and something after that. So maybe, you know, they're going to have to meet. So how are they going to meet? And then something after that would be maybe some conflict they're going to run into. Maybe they're, you know, in this, they're in this magical realm and they're two different creatures or two different races. And the population of your magical realm would frown upon them, you know, having a relationship. Maybe that's a kind of conflict they're going to run into or something like that. So have, have your, your spark idea and then an idea on either side of that. Whether it's the very beginning or the very end or whatever it is, have two things that go with it. Okay, and then tip number four is to build on that. So add something at the beginning and then something in between that first and second point and the second and third point and after the third point. And then just keep building in everywhere. You can put an idea or a detail or a plot point, anything in between any of those places. Go ahead and do that. And then just read through again and think, okay, what do I, I need something to go here, you know, brainstorm about what that needs to be, put it there. Then you may need to take, you may need to take a break after a bit. Usually outlining takes um, for me, probably a month or more. Um, for my first book, I probably spent three or four months outlining it because I didn't know what I was doing, and that's totally fine. You know, the more detailed it is, the easier it will be to prevent those plot holes and to have, you know, places you can go work on something else when you need a break from some place you've gotten stuck. Um, so tip number five then is after you have written it and you know, you've got every idea out that you possibly can, take a break from it. I recommend taking about a week's break from it just so you can come back to it with a fresh mind and that fresh mind will really help you find those plot holes if they're there. So you know, do the best you can with it, push yourself to come up with a little bit more than you really think you can and then take a break, then come back to it, have a look, 
you know, read through without making any edits and think about what needs to be fixed. Then fix all of those things, and if you get any inspiration of, you know, other great ideas since you've taken a break, you know, add in all the things that you had an idea for. And then at that point, you may be ready to start writing, or you may need to take another break, you know, for a few days or a week and come back to it. Um, and then, you know, just do that as much as you need to until you have an outline you can work with. So, and then as far as how long an outline should be, um, it, it really depends on you. Maybe you are a plotter and you really want to have an extremely detailed outline. My first outline that ended up being for my first two books was 10,000 words, which is a pretty long detailed outline. Even with that though, I added a lot of things into the rough drafts that were not at all in the outline because I just didn't think of them then. You know, sometimes you really have to start writing out, um, sometimes you have to really just start writing out your rough draft for some of the ideas and details to come. There's only so much that I am able to do with an outline, although I definitely always will have an outline. They definitely are um, in completely necessary for me. But maybe you are a pantser and you don't think you need an outline or you have, you know, never tried an outline before. Maybe just try giving this a try. Maybe just maybe just give it a try for a page. Just see if you can get, um, you know, little little points in between each other points for about a page. Just one page and maybe go with that. Maybe that'll help you a little bit when you come into writer's block later or something like that. Or maybe you're a planter, which is in between those two. That's definitely what I am. I have an extensive outline, but I, I don't necessarily stray from it, but I add a whole lot to it after creating it, you know, as I'm writing my rough draft or even further drafts. Sometimes you just don't think of things until later, and they're such great ideas you can't not use them. So please let me know in the comments whether you're a plotter, a pantser, or a planter, and if you have any other methods of outlining that you like to use. If you found this video helpful, please give it a nice thumbs up, and if you have any other writing questions you'd like me to answer in future videos, just let me know in the comments and I will do my best to get to all of them. And if you would like to see my future writing tips videos, please hit that subscribe button and for notifications about when I post on Mondays, ring that bell.